Lord, make me a virtuous woman. This is a program produced and presented by Mrs. Somo Bonike Adiola Sisu, Director of Departments of Women Ministries and Children Ministries of the West Central African Division of the Seventh Adventist Church. Lord, make me a virtuous woman. Is a program to be listened to each week on your favorite frequency. The chapter 31, verses 10 through 31 of the book of Proverbs highlights the admirable qualities of a virtuous woman. Can ordinary woman have such great qualities in her life? My answer is a big yes. If it were not possible, the Bible would not talk about it. The qualities enumerated in this chapter of the Proverbs constitute the ideal towards which every woman should tend. We can learn from good habits of life as well as from bad ones. We can rest on the wings of our Heavenly Father to model our lives according to His holy will. Let us examine each of these qualities and examine ourselves to see the realities that flow from our lives. Proverbs 31 verse 10 Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. This program is for the women, young or mature, married or not, who through a virtuous life has an obligation to train other young women and girls to be vicious. Our prayer is that by following this series of programs and wanting to appropriate these qualities, God will bless you and model you to be vicious women. Amen. Good day to you, dear listeners. And welcome back to our program, Lord, Make Me a Virtuous Woman. Today, by the grace of God, we are going to explore the two qualities of a virtuous woman. As found in the book of Proverbs chapter 31. The fifth quality today is found in Proverbs 31 verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, She is like the merchant's sheep. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maid servant. So a virtuous woman provides food for her household. That is the quality we are exploring at this time. A virtuous woman, the Bible says, it's a woman who is capable of providing food for her household. One of the essential characteristics of this excellent woman is that she provides nourishing, palatable, and balanced meals for her family. She does not give anything she finds around that may not enrich her family. She goes to any land to search for the best food for her family. The Bible says she brings her food from afar. She would rather go to the father's market or mall to buy good and healthy food for her family than be satisfied with unhealthy food sold nearby. She gives the best to her family. They are women of value. Do you know that one good way of retaining the love and the attention of a man is by providing good, palatable, and healthy meal for such a man? How many times women have snatched husbands from some women through giving them or by giving them food? When the one at home cannot cook good food, palatable food, today, salt is too much. Tomorrow, pepper is lacking. After tomorrow, too much water. And so every time the husband comes to the table to eat, it is disgusting. It is disgusting. It is just eating for eating's sake. And then there is somebody else in the office, the secretary, who brings food every break time, lunch time, and invites him to eat. Good food, palatable food, when you even open the cover of the plate, the aroma itself welcomes you and say, welcome to the table. Gradually, the husband will prefer to be filling his stomach with that secretary before he comes to the house to come and meet that uh, unattractive and unappetizing food that the wife at home provides on the table. They are women of value. We can gain the attraction, the love, and administration of our husband back by providing good food for them. In fact, there are some women who have left only the preparation of their food only to the servants. Therefore, this 
Virtuous women of Proverbs chapter 31, the Bible says, she does not leave the task of food preparation only to her servant. She is there herself to supervise the cooking and provide wise counsel to her maids. Nowadays, even some housemaids, they used to snatch husbands when they know that Madame of the house does not even have time. Maybe she has gone to her work, she doesn't have time. Or maybe she doesn't really care. She thinks she has paid an housemaid it's the work of the housemaid to provide the meal. She just says, oh, cook rice and vegetables for my husband. Okay. The housemaid, who is also in need of her husband, who can take good care of a woman, can decide to put even things in the food. The husband will eat it and begin to love her. It is true. We may need a housemaid to do our work for us. But we must not leave it wholly to them as if it is not our responsibilities. As much as it depends on us, let us do, make our effort to go to the kitchen and give the best to the husband. A virtuous woman, make sure that everybody eats breakfast. Take good food from my kitchen before they set off in the morning. How can a husband and the children leave home? empty stomach and go and face the challenges of the day without anything but a virtuous woman what is her duty it is the duty of the virtuous woman to make the necessary sacrifice to set food on the table for everyone even including the maid servants who help her at home she has to be generous with her food she has to gladden the heart of her household with her menu i happen to travel a lot because of my work. So many a times I am not at home. But when I come back, with haste and with joy, I run to the kitchen to announce to everybody through the meals I will prepare that I have returned home. Many times I hear my husband in the, in the sitting room exclaim, my wife is back. I can smell my wife's soup. I can smell my wife's stew. It gives me joy myself that my husband looks forward to the time I will return home and go into the kitchen and give him his best dishes. Can your husband also miss your best dishes? Or when it's time to eat, the husband will say, oh, I am not hungry because the food is not welcoming. That is why a virtuous woman must be a good cook. He doesn't take anything to go and learn what we do not know. It doesn't take anything for us to hide and pretend as if we know and then spend all our time cooking or providing fast food, indomies, or fast food to our household. We can learn indigenous dishes and go to our mothers in the village and they will help us again. Remind us of the secret of cooking that they use to keep their husbands at home. All men like to eat special dishes of their wives. They want to eat healthy food, carefully planned and prepared by their wives. Although you may be a professional woman whose career demands most of your time, but yet you must find time to take care of your primary responsibilities. No member of your family should go hungry. Even when you have little, through the blessings of the Lord, you can provide simple, delicious and healthy food to your family. Endeavor to provide a well-balanced and nutritious food for your family, especially in the morning. That is the secret of winning and keeping our husband by our side. We should not give them the opportunity to go and taste another woman's food outside. Why would they go and taste another person's food when we are not there to provide them with good food? I know of a couple that the wife will say, oh, my husband, I am sorry, eh? I am working, I am plating here. Eh? The tomato is on the table. This is it. Just grind and miss something. And then uh, provide yourself with something. Just cook rice. Let me see what will happen when I come back. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. The same story. Until one day, the husband told her, if you are tired of being a wife, why don't you just go back to your home, to your parents? And let me find somebody that can give me good food to eat. Of course, he has right to say such. But this virtuous woman we are talking about in the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verses 14 and 15. It's a woman who provides food for her household. You want to be a virtuous woman? Then you have to develop a habit of providing good food for your family members. 
What is the benefit of providing well-balanced food for the family? There are many benefits. When you provide well-balanced food for your family regularly, it helps to ensure the well-being of the family. It protects the members of your household from exposure to dangers and temptations outside. It increases the unity and love in the home. Because as they eat and they are satisfied, they smile and they say, thank you, thank you, mommy. Thank you, my wife. It also gives a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment to the mother of the house. You feel good at the end as you see how everybody is satisfied. It gives a sense of self-worth to the members of the family as they realize that their mother gives them a priority. Attention. Everybody knows that, ah, yes, mommy will go to work, but before she goes, she will make sure that there is food. She makes sure that there is food we will eat when we come back from work or we come back from school. When you also provide good and well-balanced food for your home, it grooms your children for a better future. How many times eh, when the women, they have left their responsibilities. We are now used to eating at the restaurants by the roadsides. We have taken joy in just giving uh, uh, money to the children. Say, oh, just find something to eat. Just find something to eat. It's only on weekends we have time. No! No, we are selling our home outside, especially our husband. But the virtuous woman in the Bible is the one who provides. She provides food for our family. That is why I want you to do this prayer with me at this time. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to provide adequate, nourishing food for my family. Help me to give them my priority attention. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us explore the sixth quality of a virtuous woman. It is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 16. The Bible says, She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. So what is the quality? A virtuous woman invests her profits wisely. A virtuous woman, she wisely invests her profits. A virtuous woman makes decisions based on wise and careful analysis. The clause she considers means she gives a careful thoughtfulness to her decisions. She takes time to think over the way she will invest her money for profit. She's not rash or impulsive. She does not take decisions from other people's point of view but carefully thinks them over and patiently chooses the best option to use her resources. She knows the importance of wisely investing her means. She's unlike many women these days that make quick, thoughtless decisions in their businesses only to find out at the end that they have made some fatal mistakes. Oh, my friend is selling uh, that and everybody is buying. Hey, that business is, is, is working. I will also go there. No, 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 no. A virtuous man does not do that. Hey, she takes time to examine. She takes time to analyze before she invests. Because our resources, including finance, come from God, we are accountable to him for the way and manner we use them. We must avoid the rational decisions regarding how we use our means. Don't forget we are all stewards of God's blessings. A virtuous woman is purposeful in her decision making. She has in mind the blessings she desires to bring upon her family. She invests in worthwhile ventures that will provide a blessing to her family and herself. She engages in farming. She understands that with God's blessings of rain and sunshine, the land will yield its fruits. She plants a vineyard. So that at harvest time, she can harvest good products, both for our family's consumption and for sale. Each harvest season is a blessing of multiplication. She's an investor indeed. The Bible promises wisdom to everyone who has. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, it is written, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and approaches not and it shall be given him. Every woman can have the heavenly wisdom to help her make wise decisions on how to invest her profit and financial blessings in a reasonable way. No matter how little her savings may be, she can invest them in something good that will bring more profit to her. We just need wisdom to do the right thing. 
I want to propose to you some necessary steps you can take before diving into an investment. Number one, before you dive into any investment, it is necessary for you to pray seriously about it. In addition to our God-given potential, we Christians have the assurance of help from the only wise God. Ah, this money I have. I am thinking of uh, selling clothes with it. I am thinking of maybe doing this kind of business to support my work, the work I am doing, or to support the family. Before we do that, we need to seek for the guidance of God. In sincerity, we should ask God for guidance as we consider our plans for investment. The Bible counsels us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Whether you want to start a new business, whether you want to till the land, or you want to save in a bank, we must always consult the unhearing one. The Lord Almighty, God, this is my plan. I don't want to be wise in my own eyes. Which one is the right way to go? Lord, I have this amount of money in my hand. What can I do with it? I am thinking I should buy these things so I can resell it. Afterward, Lord, is it right? God, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is of evil, is death. We may think this business or this investment is going to provide a lot of blessing, but it can actually be a waste. That is why we need to seek for guidance. The second point, when you want to dive into an investment, be patient. As you commit your ways in the hands of God through prayers, be patient to see clearly the way of God's leading before you begin your investment. Find out the pros and cons of the type of investment you wish to embark upon. You will do yourself no harm if you take the necessary time to weigh the cost, the risk, and the benefit of all the different options available to you. And with the wisdom of God, make reasonable and informed decisions. This was alluded to in the saying of Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 30. He says, For which of you intended to build a tower? Sit down not first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest perhaps, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So it is good to be patient and to count the cost and understand what can happen before we dive into such investment. Number three, it is time to take counsel. It is good to take counsel from others. It is always wise to seek counsel from those who have gone through that investment to see if it is worthy investing in it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, We are no counselors, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. As you listen to different people for their experiences on the type of investment you wish to enter into, you will learn from their mistakes as well as wise ways of going about the business or the investment. Proverbs 15.22 says, Without counsel, plans go wrong, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. There is nothing wrong from taking counsels from others. Those who have gone through the same investment, those who have experience. You can just find out. You may not even tell them your opinion or your desire. You can just ask them questions. What do you think about this? I learned you have done this before. How did it work? Is it profitable? What are the dangers? What are the consequences? What are the best ways of maximizing my resources for me to have the uh, best benefits of that business? By the time we listen to different people's opinion on the same investments, on the same business we want to do, on the same things we want to uh, use our money to invest, then we will see our way clearly and say, okay, is it better for me to invest in this or I should simply keep my money in the bank? The fourth thing to do when we want to invest, 
after we have considered the first three points, the next one is do not be afraid to invest. After you have done your homework well, as elaborated in the three points we have discussed before, go in for your investment. Do not be afraid to explore a new venture. You have committed your ways to God in prayer. You have carefully considered the options you have. You have taken counsel from those who have experience in that area. Then make your own decision and go for what is good for you. Making a decision is your own prerogative. So no one will make it for you. Do not succumb to the temptation to lavish your means to gratify yourself or the idea that no one knows the future. There are people who do not want to move from point A because they are afraid of risk. But a virtuous woman is not afraid of taking risk. We need to take risk sometimes before we can benefit. And even if we make mistakes, we learn from that mistake. So instead of you to just be in point one, year in, year out, take a bold step of diving into something useful that can be a source of blessing to you and your household. So, you know, allow Satan's first hold, first holds to hold you back. Step out in faith and invest with God on your side. Do not be afraid of risk at all. God is making you to be a virtuous woman. There are some women who depend everything on their husband. They are afraid to invest. They are afraid to do something on their own. They are in, uh, afraid to make provisions for tomorrow. Maybe because the husband may not want such women to do something. But it is not wise. What about if something happens to that man? That sole breadwinner who will support. Even the Bible says two heads are better than one. When you are able to support in a little way. What is doing? When something happens, when his business fails, when he loses his job, when he has accidents, when he's sick, then the little you are doing as a virtuous woman can come and cover up and bridge the gap to support the home and even take care of him in his moment of difficulties. But if you don't do anything and you just sit down, nothing, no contribution whatsoever. Yes, it's good to be a housewife. It is good. I am not saying it is bad. But being an housewife, housewife does not mean that you should not also invest. Even if you don't go to job yourself, you can have something. Not, even if it is making a farm, people will farm for you. Even if it is selling something, people will do it for you. You must have something to do because of the evil of tomorrow. And so a virtuous woman must have something in hand. And lastly, in investment, work diligently for the success of your investment. Now that you have taken the risk, God on your side, you have stepped out to invest. Then you have to work diligently for the success of that investment. Having dived into that investment, act like the virtuous woman who gives all her strength to the success of her investment. Do not be lazy, but do everything within your power to make it work. Proverbs 31 verse 17 says, She guards her lungs with strength and strengthen her arms. So strengthen your arms. Give your strength and time and concentration to make it work. Even if you have decided that you will go back to school, it's an investment. You want to upgrade yourself. It is not easy because it's been long you left school. Now you are going back to school. You have babies to take care of. It is challenging, but you can still make it. God on your side, you can make it. Go for it. Give your best to it. Concentrate. Give your time and strength. It worth sacrificing for. Do not just commit your investment into someone's hand and forget it there. Take control yourself. Monitor the progress of your investment. Because you are God's steward. A virtuous woman does not just open a boutique, a shop, and then she, she goes to sleep. Or she moves from house to house to go and be talking and this. No! Let's learn from people of other lands. Be there in your shop. Be there in your investment. Control things and make sure that people do not steal you. Those who do not sacrifice their money to open shop for you, don't let them ruin that shop for you. Be there yourself to welcome your clients, your customers with your smiles. There are some people, you put them in the shop because it is not their own. 
Whether it succeeds or not is not their problem. They are waiting for their salary at the end of the month. And when customer enters into the shop, they insult them. They shout at them. They ignore them. Will such customers come tomorrow again? But who is Lucy? You are the one, precious woman, because you are the one who invested. It is not that housemaid. It is not that hired person. That is why you must give in your best. The virtuous woman teaches us that by the grace of God, we can invest our profit wisely through the help of God. And that is why there's somebody who is listening to me at this time who desires to dive into an investment and you already have your investment. Maybe you just want, you want it to prosper or you want to move from one level to the other. Yes, like a virtuous woman. You don't want to waste your resources. You want to invest them so that tomorrow your children, your family can have something to fall back into. You need to consider all these points we have discussed. And then you can join me in praying this prayer at this moment. Lord God, please, I commit my plan of investment in your hands. I pray that you give me the wisdom that I need to invest aright. And Lord, help me to manage my financial resources that you have given me so that my investment will prove a blessing and not a cost. Thank you, Lord, for answering me. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, make me a virtuous woman. This is a program produced and presented by Mrs. Somo Bonike Adiola Sisu, Director of Departments of Women Ministries and Children Ministries of the West Central African Division of the Seventh Adventist Church. Lord, Make Me a Virtuous Woman is a program to be listened to each week on your favorite frequency.